So what are you working on? What do you do? Yeah, so right now my main focus is Usurp, and we're an SEO and digital PR agency, and we mostly cater to kind of fast-growing SaaS companies, software technology for the most part. Um, and then also on the side, growing Wordable, which is a software that uh, my partner Brad and I acquired um, about two years ago now, a little less, I think. Um, and so that's, you know, one kind of diversification we've looked at, but mostly for, for my main focus is, is really the agency side of things. And so we're working with a lot of clients uh, like Monday.com, Active Campaign, so a lot of like high growth SaaS companies uh, to, to do a lot of things on the SEO front and then also on the promotion side of things like digital PR um, and landing them a lot of link placements. So we have a, a really big focus on content marketing, but a lot of it is geared towards SEO. So not just content creation in general, or I don't know content marketing and SEO get lumped together all the time, but obviously they're not one and the same. And so we really do have an SEO driven focus, um, even when it comes to the PR side of things as well. And so that's kind of our main focus at the moment. Wordable is interesting. So uh, what are you working on with Wordable? And um, maybe talk a little bit, I, I know Wordable, but you know, for anybody listening, like what, what what's uh, Wordable's mission and focus? Yeah, for sure. So Wordable was started, I think maybe in like around 2017, I want to say somewhere around that time period uh, by the guys that grow and convert. And so we had, you know, known them for a while, uh, had interacted with them and we'd been a customer of Wordable since probably like, you know, the first year or something like that, that it was launched. Um, just because we do a lot of high volume content publishing, whether that's for our own sites, for clients, anything like that. So we really understood the value of Wordable. And for anyone listening that doesn't know Wordable, Wordable basically just helps you export content from Google Docs or an HTML file uh, to your CMS. So whether that's like WordPress, um, BigCommerce, Shopify, anything like that, um, in just a couple clicks. So you save a lot of time in terms of like reformatting stuff since the transfer from Google Docs to WordPress is super painful, just getting all those little tedious details worked out. Um, and so we had been a customer of Wordable for a long time, knew the value there, and saw that they were just looking to sell it at one point. Um, and it was really a good play for us too, because a lot of the customers of Wordable um, are pretty you know, reputable companies, stuff, people like Href, Stanford, a lot of high volume content publishers kind of in the software space as well. And so we kind of just saw it as an extension to what we're already doing on the content um, and SEO side and as a good fit too, as just kind of a brand project that we can move forward. Um, and so that's been a little bit of our focus in, in the last year and a half or so. Um, we've really focused on the product development there um, foremost, just because it was exclusively at that point, uh, Google Docs to WordPress software. And so we've since diversified it quite a bit to uh, cater to a bunch of different CMSs since we see kind of a growing market there. We also don't want to be limited by just WordPress in case they you know, add that on their own and, and crush us in that sense. Um, so that's been a little bit of a side focus for you know the past year or so now. Something I wanted to ask about with Usurp and uh, link building is um, I noticed you delineate between digital PR and link building to a certain extent. Do you look at those things differently or like um, what are kind of the services you offer and how, how would you define kind of the PR side of things? Yeah, it's a really good question. So a lot of it currently is super lumped in depending on who you ask, like digital PR and link building seem to be kind of interchanged at the moment, maybe less so in like the UK markets, they tend to understand like the, the you know, legit digital PR to a little further extent. Um, and a lot of that is like building relationships with magazines and stuff. And so we look at digital PR um, and link building as kind of serving a similar goal, though kind of different strategies on how we achieve those and how we acquire, you know, whether it's brand mentions in that sense for a PR piece, um, or, or just strictly, you know, editorial based links that are going to kind of push towards specific pages. Um, and so in terms of like a PR push, we really look at that in terms of um, creating content that we can then go out and pitch it. That's interesting, you know, to cover in a journalist, in a magazine by journalists um, or, or anything of that nature. So it's a little more, you know, from the ground up work when we're doing digital PR versus link building where we're mostly there focused on, you know, acquiring links to existing content, maybe tuning and tweaking existing content to better fit some, some sort of search intent or something that we can pitch in that sense. Um, so we see those as a, a little bit exclusive in that sense, but there's definitely overlap there and kind of the end goals of, you know, getting more links to a site, getting more brand awareness, et cetera. I mean, is it true to say that like link building tends to be a means to an end to serve SEO and content and getting rankings where maybe digital PR has an end to its own, which is, you know, media placements and awareness and, you know, maybe even referral traffic back. It's like those links could be their own kind of entity. Um, yeah. Or am I totally misunderstanding that? 
Yeah, no, absolutely. I think that's really spot on. And I think a lot of the stuff of what we do does fall under a digital PR realm or a scope of where we're, you know, we're not just trying to to boost rankings for an existing piece by, you know, getting a lot of links to it. We're really looking at kind of the full scope and the full funnel in terms of, you know, is this a logical place to where we can get a link mention on? Will this piece, you know, drive traffic back to that that page? And that's something that we really take into account. And it's kind of a large focus of what we do is, you know, is going to be, you know, is being linked on this specific page going to drive a lot of valuable referral traffic that's going to convert? Um, and so it really does come down to that like full funnel, you know, do, does someone have conversion tracking set up on their site? Is this just like a top of the line traffic play? So a lot of that will, will come into play in terms of link building. And then for the PR stuff, we really do see it as, you know, building that brand strength on its own. Um, and obviously it's going to have trickle down benefits to like, if someone's, you know, looking in SERPs and they see you as maybe second or third and they recognize you, maybe though there's a chance that they're going to click on that over the first person ranking. Um, so there's some trickle down benefits there too, but there, there definitely is some exclusivity there and really is kind of a brand focused play when we're looking at PR at, on its own. This is awesome. I, I can picture this in my mind because like, uh, well, I, I guess this doesn't totally apply, but when I was at HubSpot, like there was such a clear, like if we build links to this pillar page, like it will rank and we will convert. And you could look at that HubSpot obviously has brand awareness and uh, yeah. PR play as well. So maybe imagine like a smaller SaaS company where it's it's pretty myopically focused on that. Um, and then like, I'm looking at my agency where we don't do a lot of SEO driven content, but we totally want more brand awareness and thought leadership. Yep, so 100%. would you be down to dive in, into some nitty gritty stuff here? Yeah, absolutely. Feel free to, to fire away. But on that on that note too, like we do something similar where we're not really focused on SEO driven content, especially for our own agency, just because as I'm sure you know, as people listening to this who might have a marketing agency of sorts, ranking for anything marketing agency related is like, you know, a five to 10 year goal if that. Um, and even if that, that's not the goal, you can still generate a ton of brand awareness, whether that's through you know, thought leadership style pieces that you're publishing elsewhere. So maybe not even on your own site, whether it's, you know, maybe not even like a guest blog, but some sort of like high level piece that you're doing on, you know, a larger magazine or, or tier one or two style news source um, is, is really a good source of just building your brand and getting it out there, obviously building relationships, you know, utilizing things like Twitter and social media, not for like just promoting stuff, but for really just building relationships at scale. Um, is something that we've seen has been really good because like like you said, you know, creating SEO driven content for stuff around link building is like competing with people like Moz, Ahrefs, Backlinko, SEMrush, et cetera. And so it's kind of a really long-term focus, but not a super short-term thing for us. Yeah, the competition is incredible. And I also had to reconcile with the fact like a lot of the search keywords that have volume uh, don't actually attract the right audience or like maybe yeah. it, it's like a very long play you know if i'm to rank for what is content marketing like how many of those ten thousand people that come into that yeah. how many of them are going to be ready to you know put ten thousand dollars a month on the line for a, an agency deal it's, it's just yeah, such a absolutely an intent mismatch there um so yeah when it comes to thought leadership it's more about you know convincing somebody that you have credibility authority and expertise and and that yeah. can be done in different ways so if i came in and i'm like hey we 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 need digital PR, right? We don't. We have a couple of content assets. We've got some blog posts that rank for a couple of keywords, but mainly we're doing our podcast, we're doing webinars, we're doing some thought leadership as well with like our own frameworks. Um, what? How? How would we start that process? Like, how would we even think about? I mean, at the starting point, like, how would we think about goals? Like, how would yeah. how would we even measure this stuff? Yep, absolutely. It's a really good question and really multifaceted. I think the, the best place to start there is usually just determining what the main goals are, both in the short term and the long term. And so a lot of people come to us and there's a few different sectors of goals that they might have. So it could be a larger site where they have a ton of content published, you know, they're ranking for thousands and thousands of keywords, maybe not, you know, on the first page or anything like that, but they have a lot of content published, um, a, a good amount of brand strength there. And they really just need kind of a push on those pieces. They need help in terms of refining that getting more links to those pieces, ranking a bit higher. So that's where we'd recommend more of like a link focus play. If we were doing more of something for, you know, a brand that's up and coming or one that's just starting where they're coming in. And like you said, they have a few content assets, maybe uh, they've got a little bit established in terms of like a funnel and they've got stuff on their site. Um, then we'd really focus that a little more on a PR play since that we, we really can see that acquire a lot of links at scale too, and, and have a kind of a broader impact. Um, but a lot of that does depend on like the goals, you know, if we're trying to just increase overall traffic there for a specific segment of their audience to where they can, you know, then retarget stuff based on ads, that's a different goal. 
if they're looking to, you know, just build some more brand awareness and credibility in that space, what we really look at there is, first of all, do they have the budget for something like this to do it with us? Um, obviously, it's not cheap to, to create, you know, the ideation, first of all, for some of this to create, you know, studies that are going to be pitched out to journalists that are going to be interesting. Things people are actually going to care about reading is, is what the main focus of what we try to do there on the PR side is. Um, and not just kind of like creating assets. And we really look at that from basically a reverse engineered standpoint. So looking at, you know, what's the segment, where are their potential target audience hanging out? There's a tool, uh, Spark Toro, which you probably know, mm -hmm. is a good one to start to see, you know, where is this target audience hanging out? What publications do they read? What kind of pieces are they looking through? That's where you can start to source things like journalists and uh, different people, you know, maybe they own sites or their own media companies for that matter. I mean, really seeing where that audience is hanging out. And then you can also dig into that each each one of those journalists personally and see, you know, what topics do they cover? What are they interested in in terms of like a publishing standpoint? What do they cover frequently and how can we reverse engineer some of that in terms of a good topic or a good foundation um, for a, a PR style piece where it's, you know, we're creating something interesting that we could go to that journalist and say, hey, like we did this super cool study. We found X, Y and Z findings on, you know, we surveyed a thousand people in this market. We saw you've covered this before. We think this would be a cool asset for you to touch on and, and kind of go from there. And that's how we how we see a good PR play at least coming in from like, you know, a more newer site standpoint when you don't have some of that strength. Hello, this is Alex Burkett, the co-founder of Omniscient Digital and hopefully prolific YouTube creator at this point. Um, I am grateful that you've watched this video. You've made it to the end and I just have an ask for you, which is I love to be in a, more of a, a bi-directional conversation, if you will. It's fun producing content, but it's more fun getting your responses. So if you found anything disagreeable, controversial, contrarian, if you have opinions that you don't agree with, please let us know in the comments and we'll, we'll hash that out. If you have recommendations for people to interview or topics to cover, anything you want to learn about SEO and content marketing, we want your feedback. Basically, join us in conversation. Thank you.